All right, in this lesson, 414, Constructions with Polygons, Part 1. And since I'm a little limited in being able to do constructions for you, I'm going to show you some clips of YouTube videos. And hopefully, by next year, I'll have my own set of videos done. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this. Today's objectives is to use computer technology or compass and straight edge to construct segments, angles, perpendicular lines, and parallel lines. But just let me forewarn you, on your test, I will expect you to do your constructions by hand, okay? You do need to be practicing this. In the problem set, there are uh, examples that you can do to get good practice. Okay, a construction. It is the process by which a geometric figure is created. A straight edge can be a ruler or another type of straight bar that you can use to ensure a straight line. We don't necessarily encourage rulers, but hey, it's a straight edge, it'll work. Um, really, when it comes to working with angles, I prefer to use my protractor straight edge. Uh, protractors sometimes have rulers, sometimes they don't. But anyway, uh, it gives you a good way, if you're using a protractor and you're doing angles, gives you a good way to confirm that your angles are the same size. Okay, uh, creating figures through constructions allows you to understand concepts better and to learn new skills you may use in future lessons. Okay, so the first video that we're gonna watch, uh, all of these are on YouTube except for one and so the quality might not be great that's why I want to make my own but the first one we're going to watch is perpendicular bisector constructions this video will show you how to construct the perpendicular bisector of a segment you can use this construction to uh, construct a 90 degree angle and it also locates the midpoint of a segment so you want to start with a segment somewhere in the middle of your page. They have some space above and below. Remember that perpendicular means it's going to cross at a 90 degree angle and bisect means that it's going to cut it into two congruent parts. First step is to take and set your compass so that it is more than halfway across the segment. I'm going to set mine about this much. I'm going to make an arc above and below the line with my point stabbed into one end point. I'm going to move my point to the other end point, stab it in, and make intersecting arcs above and below the segment. Then I use my straight edge, connect those two intersections and that's my perpendicular bisector. It's the 90 degree angle and this is the midpoint of this segment. All right. I like them short and sweet. I picked out the shortest videos I could find where the people were just right to the point. Okay, constructions, as with theorems, one construction may be used to create another. You build constructions on layers of what you've previous learned, previously learned. It's kind of like when we're doing proofs. Remember I said we're only going to use things that we've learned up to Unit 4. Now, everything that we've learned through Unit 4, we're going to build on that when we start studying Unit 5. Okay, so everything builds on itself in geometry. Parallel and perpendicular lines are used in almost every aspect of engineering, architecture, building, art, and many other fields. Now we're going to watch a couple of videos. The first one is going to be a congruent angles construction, and the second one is going to be congruent segments construction. Okay, in this construction we're going to learn how to construct a congruent angle. So here's the angle that I want to copy. We'll need our compass and straight edge. And the first step we need to do is construct a ray 
endpoint. It doesn't matter how long it is. We just need to start with a ray. And this is where we're going to copy our angle to. Okay? Congruent angles. All right. The second step would be to take our compass and with any radius, and I'm going to make it smaller, we need to, we need to mark an arc that passes through both sides of our angle. And now we, we need to keep the same radius and make the same arc down on our new ray. All right, we don't have to make a full circle, just enough so that it's as wide as the angle we are going to copy. The final step would be to measure the, the arc length with our compass. We need to make this a little smaller so that it matches the arc length between these sides of the angle. And then we can copy that or transfer that down here to our new position. All right, and there we can use our straight edge now to connect our endpoint of our ray with the mark of our arc. And now we have two congruent angles. Now, normally what you would do after you got those two congruent angles is you would use your protractor to confirm that they were congruent and that you did your construction correctly. Now we're going to see a video on congruent segments construction. We're going to construct a line segment that is congruent to line segment AB using just the straight edge and compass. Step 1. Draw a line with a ruler that's longer than the line segment you're going to copy. Step 2. Put the point of the compass on one end of the line segment you're copying. Step 3. Open the compass so that the pencil end touches the other end of the line segment you're copying and make an arc. Step 4, the final step, without changing the compass, put the point of the compass on one end of the line you drew and make an arc. Here's the line segment A prime B prime that's exactly congruent to line segment AB. Okay, so we've done congruent angles and congruent segments on that slide. So now we're going to do the parallel lines construction and then we're going to see the perpendicular lines construction. In this video, I'm going to use an angle copy to construct parallel lines. Recall that in parallel lines cut by a transversal, if the corresponding angles are congruent, and the lines are parallel. So I'm going to use this conjecture and the angle copy construction to construct parallel lines. So I'm going to start with a line and then I'm going to construct a parallel line somewhere up here. To do that, I'm going to first make an angle. I'm going to label the vertex A. And I'm going to copy that vertex here and label it A prime. Now I'll use the angle copy construction to copy this angle from here, point A, to here, point A prime. So recall, to do an angle copy, I start by drawing an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. Now I'll copy that arc to the new vertex A prime. So I stab the compass in the vertex and I make the same arc. Now it's helpful to visualize where the parallel line will be, somewhere along here. I have one of the points, 
of the parallel line, point A, but to get the other point, I'm going to need to measure the distance between the intersections on the original angle, set my compass, and then transfer that distance along the transversal to this intersection here, and make a new intersection here, so that this distance and this distance are the same. Now I have two points, A prime and this new point. And after I connect them, I have two parallel lines. This construction used the angle copy construction and the conjecture that states that if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. These are corresponding angles, and they're congruent. Therefore, the lines are parallel. Okay, now we're going to see the perpendicular lines construction. Okay, in this construction, we're going to construct the line perpendicular to a given line, but passing through a point that is not on our line. So first we need to take our compass and make an arc that passes through our given line twice. And the key here is make sure that your radius is farther than the line itself. So here is our arc and you see it passes through our given line twice. All right, now we're going to go ahead and use those two points of intersection to construct two more arcs out here in the open space. The radius really doesn't matter as long as you can get them to cross each other. I'm going to go ahead and open mine up just a little bit and from each side I'm going to make a mark and I'm looking for an X. All right, so there's my X. Now we can connect our point A using our straight edge to our marks below the line and here we have a line that is perpendicular to a given line but also passes through a point that's not on the line. Okay, let's see what else we got here. I think that's the end of the videos, it sure is. Uh, just a summary of what you've learned today. Constructions give you a better understanding of how modern geometric principles were originally developed and think they didn't have protractors and compasses and all that. They, theirs was much more difficult than yours. Using geome geometry software, which you can view the constructions in the LMS lesson using GeoGebra, you can make constructions that would be more difficult or require more steps with a compass and straight edge. And constructions in geometry software allow you to create generalized geometric shapes. That is, you can drag parts of the construction around and other parts will change according to the relationship set up in the construction. This can be useful for exploring the general case of a construction quickly without having to redraw a series of figures that are related but not the same. That's similar to a calculator helping us do difficult calculations much quicker than we could do them by hand although using your brain is always better. Okay, just a quick summary. Uh, after you get finished watching this video with videos, okay, uh, you need to complete the student guide. And I think there's some GeoGebra uh, projects in the student guide that are gonna help you understand the lesson much better. Read the pages in the reference guide and add any extra notes you need. And then complete the following problems in the problem set, which is one through nine odd. And if you're having problems, um, go ahead and contact me or attend TOGA before completing the 414 quiz. And please, as normal, always make note of any general questions you may have for when you attend CC on Thursday. And of course, always give me your course and section number with all communication. That helps me help you faster. That's going to be it for this lesson, and thanks for listening.